Uh, thanks very much for giving me some time to let you know about the doxycycline study. And before I start, I just want to say again, thank you very much for all the money that you raised to help this study um, uh, run, really. Um, and in combination with the British Lung Foundation, you're basically funding the work that I'm doing at the moment. And also, just a quick plug, I've been persuaded to run the Nottingham Half Marathon this September, and I'm running it for lab action, of course, so um, and more about that later on anyway. So apologies to you if you heard my talk last year. I've been through some of this already, but I was conscious that there were some new lab patients here today, so I thought I'd give you a quick overview um, of the study in whole. So looking at why we're doing the study, who can take part, what it'll involve. I'll try and answer, I'll try and preempt some of your questions and answer them and let you know about what's happening next in terms of the people that have already replied or people that are thinking about getting involved or people that are not sure and have a few more questions. So why are we doing this study? Um, Simon's mentioned some of the, the basic molecular things already. I'm going to, my talk's idiot proof. I'm not talking about very, very much science at all with it, but as a lung specialist in training, the bit that I'm interested in is the lung side of things. So as you know, LAM affects lots of things, but the big problem that people have is that they get cysts in the lung, which affect their breathing and cause the collapsed lungs and things like that. And uh, this is a scan of, a series of scans of somebody with LAM, and um, what you see is as the LAM gets worse, the holes in their, worse get, LAM, in their lungs get worse. And we think this... Pr the cystic process of the lungs is caused by the set of proteins, these MMPs that Simon was talking about earlier on. And if there's some way of blocking these MMPs, we'll be able to stop this lung process getting worse. So we're not talking about a cure for the problem that's causing lamb in the first place. We're talking about stopping the lung deterioration getting worse in lamb. So what's doxycycline got to do with it? Um, most of you will have probably heard of doxycycline in some shape or form. Some of, you, some of you will have taken it if you've been to Africa. It's an anti-malarial tablet. It's also a commonly used antibiotic for chest infections as well. And it's cheap as chips, and most GPs will have heard of it as well. And we know that it's a fairly safe drug. There are lots of people that are on it. There's been lots of studies it in, of it in other disease conditions where, where they've taken it for a period of time. And we know that doxycycline inhibits these MMP proteins. It's been tried by dentists looking at gum disease and the... Vascular surgeons are trying it, looking at its effects on aneurysms and things like that. So the bottom line is we think that doxycycline might prevent lung damage in LAM. Um, so we know fairly conclusively that these MMP proteins go up in patients with, with, with LAM. And there have been various studies around the world looking at LAM sli slices from people's lungs in LAM, and they've shown that there's an elevated level of these proteins. And we know from other disease conditions that it looks like if these proteins are elevated, then you get an increased turnover in the scaffolding that holds the lung together, and you get holes in your lung if, it's, if, if it goes untreated. So if we can inhibit these proteins, then will doxycycline stop these, these cysts forming? What's the evidence? Well, there's not actually that much evidence at all at the moment. This paper's, I think, mentioned on the LAM Action website as well. It's basically a study of one patient where they gave them doxycycline and saw what happens. And they found that these proteins that they could detect in the blood and in the urine disappeared when they treated this patient with with doxycycline, and also their spirometry, their lung function, their FEV1 appeared to get a little bit better. But that's just one patient, and that's not good enough evidence for us to give you a drug which, although has mild side effects, does have side effects. Uh, there's been a little bit more evidence. There was a group in America that gave doxycycline to 20 patients and again showed similar things, but uh, again, that's not a randomized study. And I think one thing that Prof, Cor Prof Corus was talking about was that there aren't really very many randomized studies in LAM to see really whether a drug works or not. I mean, the only one that's coming through at the moment is the mild study. Um, so what are we going to do? We basically are going to run a randomized control study, and we need people to take part in it. Um, as you know, LAM's a rare disease. We don't have many patients to recruit in the first place. And for us to get decent results that hold up to analysis. We need a decent number of patients to, to, to take part in the study. So we need your help. Who can take part? Well, the answer is pretty much anybody if you're willing to come up to Nottingham to be seen by us. You need to have a diagnosis of confirmed LAM, and that can either be sporadic or in association with tuberous sclerosis. And you need to have a lung function that's bad enough for us to be able to detect a difference if things are getting better, getting worse. So our current uh, criteria is that your FEV1, that's the amount, that's the 
amount you blow out, blow out in the first second needs to be less than 80% of predicted or it needs to have fallen by 20% if you've got a record of what's been happening with your lung function. And you can have your hormone treatment and you can have your inhalers to be in the study, that's fine, as long as your treatment has been stable for the past three months. Unfortunately, you can't take part if you're under 18. If you've had a recent pneumothorax, a chylus pleural effusion, if you've had one of these bleeding renal tumours, this angiomyolipoma, or you've had a change in your hormone treatment in the past three months. You can have epilepsy and be in the study, but it needs to have been stable, and it can't be severe epilepsy as well. If you're pregnant or you're trying to get pregnant or breastfeeding, you can't be in the study, and that's because of the, effect, the potential effects that doxycycline could have on an unborn child. If you've had an organ transplant, you can't be in the study either. If you have, you've got any other significant major illness, and by major illness we're talking about severe heart disease, so badly controlled angina, cancer, badly controlled hyperpressure, liver problems, severe kidney problems. So a severe medical problem for which you're seeing a specialist about and you're under current treatment for, I think we would say. If you're on drugs that might interact with doxycycline, you can't come on and be a part of the study, particularly if you're on warfarin tablet. That's one of the blood thinning tablets that we quite often prescribe in hospital. If you're allergic to doxycycline, clearly you can't take part. If you're on rapamycin or drugs like rapamycin, you can't be in the study. And if you've been taking doxycycline or another experimental drug within the past three months, you can't be part of the study. But if you're on it and you want to take part, you can stop it and then be recruited in three months' time. So what you all want to know is what's actually going to be involved for me. We appreciate that people are putting themselves out to be part of the study, so I need to make it clear what's actually going to be involved from your part. We're aiming to find out whether doxycycline stops the lung damage that we see in LAM. We also want to know if it does stop this damage, how effective it's going to be. We also don't know what dose of doxycycline you're going to need to be given, and also is it worth it given that there are side effects to doxycycline, which again I must stress are, are mild. How are we going to do it? We need 40 patients. It's going to be a randomised study, so, uh, so you'll be divided into either receiving the active doxycycline tablet or a placebo tablet. And it's going to be double blind, which doesn't mean we're all going to be blindfolded, but it means that neither you're going to know whether you're getting the placebo tablet or, or, or the doctors, or m myself or Simon, won't know what you're getting either. And it's single centre, meaning that all the treatment is, and all the investigations are going to be coordinated in Nottingham. When is it going to start? Well, pretty much as soon as possible. Many of you have already replied to me, and I've got all your slips already, and I'm going to start phoning people on Monday or emailing you to arrange tests and arrange for you to come to see us in Nottingham. Um, um, from Monday, there'll be about a two-week lag period before the tablets will be ready for collection, but that's not a problem. We can still get you up, get all the tests in, and then post the tablets out to you. So we're really raring to go, and we're hoping to start getting the ball rolling on Monday. This is a quick diagram to explain the study outline. It, it's quite complicated, but basically, after your initial assessment, you'll need to come and be seen in Nottingham on a three-monthly basis, and uh, I'll give you fairly regular phone calls on a monthly basis to make sure you're not having any problems and things are going, going all right. 